Welcome back to another video. I've got a couple of tripods that were sent in via KNF Concept. So what I'm going to do is I've tried to compress it as much as possible, but I'll put a timestamp so you'll be able to jump to the smaller travel tripod if you want during the video. Package on this is very similar to the other tripods that I've looked at. You have the padded case that's supplied, very similar to ones that I've used before. It's a decent quality case. You do get a shoulder strap which is padded too. The grey areas that you see on the bag, they are also reflective, so if you get things like lights or headlights, that will uh, shine the light back. just helps a bit with visibility. The included items, very simple, the Allen key and the manual, and I have put the specs on screen for you, the main ones. It's an updated version of the previous model, and I'll cover the main differences, but you can see this one goes right the way up to just over 94 inches. You can see it when it's compressed down with the legs reversed around, and they've got a different head on this which I'll show you in a minute. So just under the two foot for the compressed size and there's your auto leg locks. These are spring loaded as well so what you can do is just push them in and you'll be able to lift it back up to change the position of the legs. Let's move on to the ball head. This is the most obvious change from the previous model and they've gone with the low profile ball head, the KF28. With this particular head I've done a separate video so I will link to that in the cards at the top. And I will also put a link at the end of the video. It's quite an in-depth look, as much as you can do for a ball head. Um, and it's a compact ball head, so do watch that if you're interested in a bit more information on that. I'll cover it briefly in this video. You have a more compact size with the plate, and it's also shorter, and it isn't as heavy as the previous ball heads that you would have seen on many of these tripods. Being Arca Swiss style, you can use other plates with this head as well, and you do have the D-ring, as well as a slot if you want to screw it in. The notches on the side prevent it from slipping out of the plate position if you just slightly loosen it off, and there is a laser engraving marking there on the side if you need that. You can also take off that plate at the bottom if you want to, and you can also change head as you'd expect. The main attraction with this tripod is the transverse column, so you just unscrew at the side, pull it through and it allows you to use the central column and an off central position and that has a few uses which I'll cover in a minute but obviously the main one would be macro photography or if you need to get in a low down position it makes it quite easy to do that. There is a marking on there as well that's laser engraved, a stop mark, that's really if you've got the central column up rather than through in this position that I'm showing you and you can rotate this around 360 degrees. The locking knob on the side, that does provide some tension, but even if you fully tightened it, you can still move it if you apply a bit of pressure, but it does stop it moving around too freely. There is a possibility to do some pans with it if you're doing video. Um, it could do that, it's reasonably smooth. Now I'll show you the central column extended up again. So this is a two-piece central column with this particular tripod. This is pretty tall once you've got both of the columns up, as I've shown you in the picture. I personally wouldn't really need to do that myself. You probably won't even need to um, extend one of the central columns. You've got the rubber O-rings there, which prevent it from slamming down. Gives a bit of uh, softening with the dampening. Pretty good build on this. They have modified a few small things in terms of design, but the head is the main difference. There's your hook if you want to put a weight on the bottom to stabilise it and you can also unscrew that if you want to and if you need to reverse it or set it up as a monopod. This uses the twist lock system rather than the lever locks and it works fine, it's just not quite as quick as the lever lock system but I've not really got a problem with it myself, it does keep the size down. On the bottom you've got the pointed rubber feet and you can also adjust the position that unscrew it which means that you could level it off on uneven ground or you can completely remove them so it's possible to replace them with something else like spikes. As far as the stability goes it's pretty good. You'll see a bit of flex on the smallest section although you really wouldn't need to raise it up. Um, I have tend to find that the two sections is probably enough for most uses. I'll just attach the plate to the camera and put it into the top of the head. You'll see that it is a single spirit level, so what you want to do is have that at the back near the LCD display if you want to see the spirit level and tighten it at the front. Depending on what sort of lens you're using, with the column down in its lowest position, you can get fairly low to the ground, lower than you'd normally be able to get, 
but if you wanted to get even lower what you'll have to do is reverse the column and you can decide if you want to use the transverse part where you pull it out or you could just use it straight down it gives you a bit of flexibility with some of your options and possibly a bit easier to use when it's extended out at the bottom as far as the monopod goes one of the legs is marked with it and it also the only one with the foam has the screw built in so you don't have any chance of losing that just tighten it into the central column and there you have your monopod if you wanted to take the transverse column out you could do that I'm not sure that I'd need to myself size on the screen for you can see this is a really tall monopod I mean if you needed something that was really high this might do the job for you it definitely goes higher than most monopods and a quick visual comparison next to the Zomi tripod that I reviewed a few years ago which is a medium sized one moving on to their new model of the compact travel tripod case and the bundle is exactly the same with this but you'll see it is quite a bit smaller and the overall design is similar though there are a few differences which I will cover bundle on this is basically the same you've got your case shoulder strap and the allen key and also the same locking mechanism on the legs with the spring loaded tensioner on that so that means you can pull it in and adjust and the same hook at the bottom so quite similar in terms of the overall look they've gone for that sort of funky orange color put the specs on screen for you this is the 254 T1 and you'll notice that the weight is about half a kilo less than the previous one that I looked at though it's not as tall and um, it goes up to just under 160 centimeters and we also feature this same uh, compact ball head that we had on the first tripod again I'll put a link to that at the end so that you can watch a specific video on that ball head I've used this ball head on a few tripods and also on a monopod for a while and I quite like it it does save a little bit of weight and it does keep the size down a bit we're using the lever locks on this versus the twist locks the advantage of that is it's quicker and you always know whether it's locked or unlocked whereas you have to just tension up the screw lock a bit more personally prefer it myself there's your pointed feet rubber feet at the bottom which can also be removed this tripod also features a double extending central column which means to say that you can get that extra height and you'll probably need to use it because it's a shorter tripod and um, so if you're someone who's really tall maybe it'll be a bit short for you but um, personally I find it okay and of course like all these tripods you can take off the plate just under the head and you could change that if you wanted to or obviously change the head if you unscrew the hook at the bottom you can take that out there's a thread on that and then just pull out the central column what I do now is show you reversing it around so you'll need to do this if you want to get really low the reason is you don't have a short central column with this tripod some of the ones that I've looked at you do it would have been nice if they included that but anyway perhaps they want to keep the uh, cost down or the size down of the package and you can see you can get fairly low but not super low so you'll need to reverse that around as I've shown on the screen and you can get it into a very low position the first tripod that I looked at that would be ideal for macro this is more of a general purpose traveling tripod as I have the central column out I'll show you the monopod same procedure you have the threads built in to the leg and then just screw it into the central column and that makes your monopod it's quite simple and quick to do it does give you a bit of flexibility perhaps you don't have a monopod or you didn't bring one with you I do quite like the monopod feature and they are pretty stable to be honest this is actually probably even more stable than the first tripod because the leg sections are actually a little bit thicker so there's very little flex in this even applying pressure to it quite a solid little tripod I do like the compact size be interesting if they gave us a carbon version of this that would probably drop the weight down even more only disadvantage would be that you don't get that short central column included with this one obviously that's a non-issue with the transverse column one because that's designed to be rotated around and brought out KNF seem to have improved the finishing we've got laser engraving that's not paint and they've also smoothed off most of the edges a bit more than I've seen on previous ones although I wouldn't mind a lower profile leg locking mechanism that's stuck out a little bit less these are both quite nice tripods the first one with the transverse column I would say would be better suited to home use where because of the size and the weight or home or studio and if you're doing a lot of macro the compact travel one I quite like this one it's definitely a bit smaller than some of the other ones that I've seen from different makers 
If you've got any thoughts or questions on these tripods, do leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and I'll catch up with you soon.